In this video, we will learn how to use the Datasmith exporter to export and synchronize your Wino file with Twinmotion. If you have the Datasmith plugin installed, you can see this floating menu. Um, you should grab it not in the blue area, otherwise you have this menu as a new segment here in this area. You have to grab the Datasmith um, name and you can just then just drag it into your menu bar. Also regarding your file, your file is organized by layers. Uh, this is a really good way of doing this. Every layer has its own material. So we export uh, via materials and via layers. I have Twinmotion opened and if I go to import, you have several options, your me to direct link. I'm interested in the direct link and you can see that there's a puller menu and I have uh, two Wino files and I have this Wino file Cushino house and I have the Wino file small objects because I have opened Wino twice. I have two Wino files open. If no Wino is open, there is also no link. So always if you use direct link and you want to exchange it with your Wino file, you have to open a Wino. If you don't want to exchange something and you just want to work in twin motion, your Wino file doesn't have to be open. So I just select, select this Cushino house file and we just have a look at the setting. When you import and exchange your file, you have several options. The recommended option uh, is Collapse by Material. This is optimized for real-time renderings because it reduces the number of objects that are imported into Twinmotion. And all objects that uh, you use have the same material and they're in one uh, single group. So this is really efficient. There are also other options. Uh, keep hierarchy means it is the same hierarchy like in Wino. So you have full access to every object. And uh, these are the two options you uh, can work with. My recommendation is collapse the material. Enable substitution, I would uh, switch on because this allows you also to exchange the materials uh, in uh, Twinmotion and just add uh, new materials in Twinmotion, which is really handy. Okay, I just go into import and um, When you imported this, you, can, uh, you can't see anything so far because you have to open Wino again. And in Wino, you have to go to synchronize. First of all, I go to uh, connections and I just see that there is a connection with uh, Twinmotion. That's really good. And the next thing I just switch on synchronize and uh, go back to my uh, Twinmotion. And here we go. Your, um, Wino file is now in twin motion with one click. The Wino file was really small. This is also why it worked really fast. First of all, we would like to have a look at the scenes. I just opened this uh, scene graph and you can just see that there is uh, the name of your file and you can see different kind of objects and these objects are related to materials. And uh, if I, for example, just right click on concrete walls and I just say isolate on. Then you can see that all the objects which have the material of uh, this concrete in Rhino are merged together into one object into a motion, which is actually really handy. My recommendation is to look at all the objects properly also regarding material. When I take the material picker, I just do it like this. Then you can see it is the material of Rhino concrete wall. And I always would do very few settings. First of all, I always go into settings and I just see that two sided uh, is switched on. Sometimes it's happened. You can't see it right now here because this Rhino file is fine. Sometimes it's happened that your surfaces uh, are flipped and uh, you can't see your object because you see it from the backside. And in Rhino, it doesn't do anything, but in twin motion, it will do something. Your object are just not there, which is really uh, not nice. So always for every object, use uh, two-sided on. And then you also see that the material and the way the material is mapped is quite different than it would look like in Rhino. You can optimize it in Rhino, and I recommend this, but you can also do for fast rendering, set up everything into a motion, and I will just show you how to do this. 
I just go into, for example, a concrete material and I just take this uh, concrete uh, slab or just take this one here and I drag and drop it on my object. But what you can see is that uh, it still doesn't look good. It's not expected. Sometimes it's too big, sometimes it's too small because right now the object or the material is applied to the object in the UV direction from Rhino, which is not properly done and uh, it's not optimized. What you have to do it to do it better in twin motion, you just go into cubics if you have an orthogonal geometry, otherwise it's difficult to do this and you have to do the setup really well in Rhino. It's not the topic right now, but I go into cubic UV and it still didn't change. What you have to do, you just drag and drop it again and now it already looks uh, really good and you can change the scale and all these things. This is also not what this video is about. And I just go through all these um, different kind of uh, objects and uh, have a look. Also here, um, I take my um, I take my um, uh, material and I just switch on um, on two sides. And here you can, or could already see that there was an issue. And I think it's interesting to look at this. Uh, it was, I think, right now here. There are some things just missing. It looks like that objects are missing. I just go into two-sided on and you can see that this uh, definitely makes a difference. So just be aware of that two-sided on is a really important, uh, uh, important uh, setup. Okay, uh, here again, uh, I probably changed the material, uh, not important right now. I go through all these materials. For example, uh, the floor just gets, um, any material, it doesn't make any sense, I know this, but uh, that's fine. And here again, if you think that uh, that this mapping is not uh, the way you expect, just uh, reapply it with the setting of cubic, uh, then you will definitely get for any orthogonal uh, geometry the right setting. Okay, I did this with all materials apart from the glass. Uh, with the glass, we just want to focus on this because there are some issues. I just take the glass and I just say, isolate on off. So you can already see the glass or walls. So first of all, I take the material picker again and I just go into settings and I just go on two-sided on. And then you can see many more glasses appeared. And um, there's a reason for this because in Rhino, some of the glasses I just had as a single um, surface and uh, the others are a little bit like this box, uh, box object with double glazing. First of all, I just go into material and I just say glass and I go into two-sided glass. Uh, by the way, if I go into two-sided off, you can already see that they disappear. My recommendation is uh, I would uh, always uh, see that for window glasses, you only use glasses with one with one surface and you don't use glasses which are have a dimension and especially not these uh, um, uh, these edges. The reason why you shouldn't do this is first of all, sometimes you can't pick the object because it's probably the wrong way around. The other object uh, the other reason is uh, is that it just starts to flicker. I just go again and just say isolate or off. And uh, we just have a look at um, our, um, our glasses and you can see the, the, the windows, uh, just see where I found this double glasses. The windows with the double glasses, they start to flicker, especially because they're two surfaces on top of each other. Uh, it's the frame and this is something which is not nice and obviously uh, the windows with the glasses which are, are not with, with uh, are only one surface. Uh, don't flicker, so uh, really recommended, recommended that you don't have this issue or you have to uh, be aware of that in uh, Rhino um, the windows are a little bit bigger. My recommendation is always reduce every window to a single surface and don't build a window with double glazing in your 3D program. Okay, um, we nearly finished um, the starting ground. Uh, you probably don't need. Uh, you can switch it off or ideally you just delete it. And we just want to have a few uh, 
more looks at uh, Wino and the exchange with uh, Twinmotion. First of all, if you synchronize with Wino, I strongly recommend that you don't move objects in Twinmotion. You only do it in Wino. For example, if I just uh, choose the walls and I just move this and I just go back to uh, Wino and I go into synchronize, uh, then you just see that it just stayed at the position where it was in twin motion. And you also can't do control Z. Uh, this is not uh, nice. Uh, you should not do this. If you move something in Wino and I just go back again, and for example, I just move up this object and I just say synchronize, then you can see that it just moved up in twin motion. And if I go back to Wino and this, I just say control Z, and I synchronize again, uh, then you just see that it moved back in Wino. So don't move anything into motion which is synchronized to Wino. When I close my Wino file and I uh, just uh, look at uh, Twinmotion and go again into import, then you can just see that um, Twinmotion link is broken. There is nothing to uh, find. You can go to direct link, and if it's probably a different file name, you can search for this and uh, open this in Wino again. And if I go into Wino and I just reopen my file, then uh, the link uh, is working again and uh, I just reopen it. By the way, it's a different name now, but anyhow, um, this will work. Uh, I can choose it. Just go into um, direct link again and um, here we go. And then the link is uh, working again. This also means you don't have to worry about the connection. You not always need to open Wino in parallel. You can just work in Twinmotion, but always when you want to exchange it, open your Wino file and do everything in Wino uh, regarding transforming and uh, position. And don't do this in Twinmotion and uh, then you are actually fine. Thanks for watching.